Hey guys, what's up? Serena Pia here from thriftdiving.com and today we're going to do something really, really cool. We're going to make a big DIY whiteboard. Stick with me because I'm going to show you how to do it. So we'll be using a two foot by four foot whiteboard. You can get it from any home improvement store. And while you're there, pick up some decorative trim and you'll need some Gorilla Clear Grip adhesive because we'll be gluing those boards down to the whiteboard. You'll need a tape measure, maybe a speed square. And for this project, I'm gonna use a miter saw, but I'm also gonna show you how to use a miter box for those of you who don't have power tools. So make sure that you have a large surface. We're gonna to have to spread out this two foot by four foot whiteboard. I measured it just to make sure it did not come out to be exactly 48. It was actually 48 and an eighth. So make sure you know exactly how long and how wide this board is. So make those measurements and then we're gonna do some cuts. This trim is essentially going to frame the whiteboard and I like to start off with a nice 45 degree cut. I think it's easier to measure from that than it is to measure from a blunt unfinished edge. And that's what I did. I measured it out to 48 inches plus the 1 8 And again, if you do not have a miter saw, don't worry because I, I will show you how to use a miter box and I have a video teaching you how to make frames using a miter box. And you can find that link down below in the description. And whenever I'm measuring and marking, I love to use speed squares, especially when I'm cutting at 45 degree angles, because let me tell you, you will cut at the wrong angle, I guarantee. And then you will be heading back to the home improvement store for more wood. So go ahead and mark that 45 degree angle, making sure you mark it in the direction that you're supposed to cut. So I turned my machine at 45 degree angles, quickly made the cut, and then I was ready to move on to the next piece. And after every single cut, check the piece and make sure that it fits. Check it at each corner because sometimes you do leave a little too much. Now, if you don't have a miter saw, don't worry. You can use a miter box. You will need to use that arm strength a little bit, but it is an option for those of you that do not have the miter saw. Now, the one at the top is the one that I use the miter saw for. The one on the bottom is the miter box. And you see it's a little bit more ragged, but with some sandpaper, you can clean that up. But it is a really good option. All right, so at this point I had the top and bottom cut and it was time to do the sides. I did them the exact same way that I did the top and the bottom. I had two pieces left over of scraps and it was perfect. It was just long enough for me to get two sides out of the two pieces that were cut off from the other two pieces. So you really only need to get two long pieces. I believe they were about eight feet each at your home improvement store and total the trim cost, I don't know, I wanna say probably about $15 total. And I was hoping this wouldn't happen, but one piece was just a little too long and it was not fitting. So here's how I cleaned it up. I lowered the saw blade, bumped up the piece of trim next to the blade, and then raised the blade. And when I brought it back down, you'll see it skims just a little tiny bit off of that trim. And miraculously, it worked. It fit like a glove. So I was very happy with it and I was ready to do some staining. I decided to go with a dark stain, a Java gel, because I wanted it to look rich and expensive. And so if I had painted it, eh, I didn't think it was gonna look as good. So I wiped it on and then took a rag, wiped it off and let it dry probably maybe about an hour. And then I came out and sprayed it with some clear enamel to just to protect it. And it looked really good. It had some shine to it and it looked good. All right, so I laid everything out one last time before gluing it. And when I knew that it was ready to go, I glued it down. And for this project, I used Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive. And the reason why I like this is because it sets very quickly. So normally with some other adhesives, you know, it's gonna wiggle around, it's gonna move around on you. This didn't move around too much. So that was great. And I can use it inside and if I've got any exterior projects, I can use it outside because it's waterproof. So here's the order in which I glued it down. I did the top and then the left side and making sure that you wipe any excess glue that comes out the side. This is really important because you don't want that glue drying and seeping out of your project. So make sure you wipe it off with a towel. And then once that is cleaned up, then you can move on to the bottom piece and then finish it off with the last side and let it dry overnight. The next day I removed the small clamps and it was time to do some little minor things in order to finish off this whiteboard. Because we had glued trim to the whiteboard, we didn't want the sides of the whiteboard to be noticeable. So I took some of the gel stain, wiped it on the edges, and it gave it a more cohesive look. And the easiest way to hang this DIY whiteboard is to just use sticky strips. Unfortunately, I only had four pair and so I put one at each corner, but I think 
if you're doing this and you're using sticky strips, get like two packs and make sure that you put some in the middle just for extra support. And I had these really pretty silver letters, so I decided that I was going to spell out create every day. And then I realized, oh no, it's not centered. It looks horrible. So I had to shift them over a little bit so that it looked even. And then I took it upstairs to see if I could get it to hang evenly. All right, so we have the letters on there pretty good. And I think it looks really, really nice. It looks expensive. It looks like I spent a lot of money on it, but I didn't. It's just a whiteboard with some DIY framing and of course some letters. So let's go into the kids' room and see where this baby is gonna go on the wall. And if you're like me, you typically hang things crooked. Well, a level helps make sure that you hang it nice and straight. Once I knew that it was straight, I just pushed on it and the sticky strips stuck to the wall and I thought it looked really good. So these are all the things I have left to do in the kids' room for their makeover. And when they got home, they were pretty excited to see it. They enjoyed having, you know, each side to themselves. And I can't wait to see what this room looks like when I'm totally done. So if you enjoyed this makeover, be sure to go back to thriftdiving.com, subscribe to my channel, and head back to gorillaglue.com. Check out the clear grip because it really does work when you're trying to do projects and you need that quick setting glue. All right, guys, I will see you next video.